That don't make any sense. All right, to these people, it doesn't make sense. All right, now what it say? All right, but verse 12, one more time, saying these laughs have wrought but one hour. They only worked an hour. And thou hast made them equal unto us which have borne the burden and heat of the day. Now, we was cutting grass in the act. When it was 12, 1, 3 o'clock, we was cutting grass. It was sweating. We ain't had no water. He came when we finally got the water cooler. They got here at 6 o'clock. The sun was almost not cooking everybody now. It's almost 7 o'clock. I'm talking about the heat of the sun. When it's daylight, stay out to 9. They get here at 6, 7 o'clock, and they got they, they had the water cooler and everything. They got here when the cooler was here, and all the water was in there. We had snacks and everything, and we didn't have all that early. We worked at from 9. We started at 9 o'clock, 10, 11, 12. One, two, three, four, five, six. We done worked 10 hours for they even got here with no cooler. They got here with a cooler guy. So they out here, they only cut two yards. We done cut 25 yards. They cut two yards. And now it's time to get paid. And now he paying everybody. They got, he paid, he giving everybody $500. The guys we work for, $500. All right, so they got their check. $500. Like, they got $500. Ooh, the first one. You guys just got here at six, man. They got $500. He gave them $500. Yeah. What? You know, we <laughs> hey, well, let's see what ours is going to be. $500. Okay. Here's Tony. He gave me my check. That's the that phone going off. Wait a minute. They gave me $500. <laughs> it was a mistake. I got $500. Hey, uh, <laughs> good man in the house, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> it must have been a mistake. <laughs> See, that's a <like> 500. <laughs> yeah. Can you get mine? That's why I got mine. It must be a mistake there. No, I give everybody the same price. You get 500. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Uh, the guy in front of me, one of them just got here at 6 o'clock. We had all the water and snacks and everything. He got, he only worked a couple hours. You know, <laughs> he got $500 too, so. You can go ahead and pay me, right? Go ahead and give me, more. Give me about two or three more. <laughs> no, everybody get $500. Now, that don't make sense. Now, how he, wait a minute. I should get like a thousand, you know, maybe 1500 No, you get $500. You see, let me show you. Remember I gave you the pen earlier? Yeah. Is that your name up under there? Yeah, I, yeah. You signed and you agreed for a penny, right? For $500. Yeah, that's right, but I, I've been here all day, is what I'm trying to tell you. No. Or it, or it, do you have an evil eye? Because I do what I want to do. It's my money. It's my stuff. And I do what I want to do with my stuff. It's mine. Or is your eye evil because I do good? You see? Keep reading. Let me show you. Look at verse 13. But he answered one of them and said, friend. He called him a friend. I do thee no wrong. I ain't doing you wrong. Did not thou agree, ain't your signature on that paper, with me for a penny? That's what you agreed. And everybody, I gave, I paid, they agreed. You was the first, right? Look at verse 2, 20 verse 2. It said, and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny, you see, a day, he sent them into the vineyard. All right, so there was the people he agreed with earlier. Them were the first people. These are the people that he's coming to. So they all agreed for a penny. So he's reminding him of verse 2. Verse 14 says, take that thine is. Go on, take that check here. This is your check. Go on, take that. That's yours. Take thine. What thine is. Take what yours is. What's yours. And go thy way. Go on now. You see? I will give unto this last. I'm going to give a portion to this last person, the person that you're complaining about, even as I unto them. Same stuff I'm giving. I'm going to get same thing I'm giving this person. I'm going to give it to you. You get the same thing you get. It don't make no difference. This is how the kingdom of heaven is. Now listen to what I'm telling you. The Bible, Jesus is saying, I'm going to tell you what the kingdom of heaven is like. Let me tell you another story about what kingdom of heaven is like. Let me tell you what heaven is like. Heaven is like everybody equal. <laughs> you be equal. We equal. But that ain't fair. You know what I'm saying? Because we all going to be in heaven, right? So, you mean to tell me that I'm be equal to angels? Because angels live in heaven too. Jesus said, yep. You're going to be equal like the angels. You're going to be just like them. That's what the Bible says. 
you will be just like the angels. Whatever the angels do, you're going to get to do the same thing. Say it right there in the Bible. When the Sadducees had a question, you see, read yourself. The Sadducees. I remember a friend named Brother Brown when I was in prison. He always said that this is what the Sadducees, they're sad, you see. That's what he always say, sad, you see. You see, they sad. Amen. So it's sad, you see. So that's, but that ain't what it means. But what happened is they had a question about the resurrection. Because they didn't really believe in the resurrection at all. Like, I don't believe in that stuff at all. But they had got to ask Jesus a question about a man, if a man lost his wife. Because the law said if a, a lady had married a man and, and he had died, then she'd get his brother. Or whatever, and then he died and get that brother. Then he died and get that brother. And then she that he died and he get the brother. And they say, now in the resurrection, since you said it is one, in the resurrection, whose wife that gonna be? So Y'all say it's a resurrection. Then. So whose wife that gonna be? Jesus said, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. You see? You don't make this. Ain't nobody even given in marriage, and uh, nobody gonna be married. She ain't gonna be nobody's wife, uh, uh, husband or wife, or none of that. They ain't nothing be none of that. Because we don't have babies and things like that. Now. Matter of fact, every man will be equal unto the angels. You'll be just like the angels. Be the same thing. You see? And that's where you can read that story. If you ever want to read that. That's over in the next. Uh, uh, you can read that over in. Uh, that would be Matthew chapter 22. Verses 29. All the way on through to. Uh, 34 and it said he had put the Sadducees to silence. Shut them up. In other words, <laughs> yeah, I love that story. Uh, if you uh, if you go over to 2230, I can just show you that scripture. Verse 2230, same book here, 2230. We're coming right back. Uh, it says, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage. All right, marriage is ordained to perpetu perpetuate. The human family. So that humans, so he said, uh, be fruitful and what? Multiply. Multiply down here on earth. All right. So he said, uh, 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 for in verse 30, 22, 30, it says, for in the resurrection, in the end of the world, at the 12 midnight hour, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but, talking about human beings, are as the what? Angels. Of God. Now, where does this take place? Huh? In heaven. In heaven. See, in heaven, you are as the angels of God. That which they don't get married and do none of that. You see? Angels judge. And so do we. Mm -hmm. We'll be judging people. We will judge the angels. See? You read all the stuff you just read about this stuff. All right, now where was we at? Okay, let's go back to where we were. All right. Take that nine years and get on out of here, is what he said in verse 14. 15 says, is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own, with my stuff? Is not I evil because I am good? So the last shall be first and the first last. Keep your eyes on your own stuff. Just worry about you. You, you wouldn't have had no problem if your eyeballs wasn't on this guy over here. You wouldn't have had no problem if you were looking at his chat and what I'm paying him. Keep your eyes on what's yours. A lot of us today as Christians, we need to keep our eyes on our own self. Don't be worried about what nobody else doing, but you worry about what God told you to do. What did you agree with God for when you got your covenant with God? When you came into your belief system, what did you agree with God? Oh, now keep your eyes on that. Amen. You can't force people to be you. You can't force people to talk like you. Amen. You got to do what God told you to do. Now I'm going to show you a scripture over in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 7. We're coming right back, though. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. All right, you there? 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I'm going to read verse uh, 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 18. Please, if you get there. It says, Is any man called being circumcised? Do you see that? Is any man called being circumcised? Let him not be come uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision, let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandment of God, commandments of God. 20. Let every man abide in the same calling. Now the word calling means condition. 
Let every man abide in the same calling or condition wherein he was called. Art thou called being a servant? That means in jail, a prison, or a worker of, in bondage, like a slave. Care not for it. Don't, be, don't worry about that. But if thou mayest be free, use it rather. You can become free. You may you'd be better if you was free. For he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's free man. It don't matter. You're free anyway. Amen. Is the Lord, okay, it's the Lord's free man. Likewise, also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. So you really become a servant. Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye servants of men. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called therewith, therein, abide. Or stick with God. Amen. Amen. In the condition, whichever condition you call, go ahead and be called with God. Because we all call with God. So what you have to do is don't keep your eyes focused over on these people over here. Worry about what you're supposed to do. Because guess what? By your love, you see, your walk will be examined. And by your love shall men know that you got Christ's disciples. Jesus said, and he, but by, because you have love for one another, uh, I'm going to know that, that you, you belong to God. People are going to know. I'm, I'm supposed to see you and know Jesus. I'm supposed to find out who Jesus is through you. Not through you looking over there at the end. You're trying to judge yourself off of nothing, man. Now you looking over here. Worry about them. I'm worried about uh, how they going to get the same thing I got in heaven. How you going to get the same reward? How you get eternal life and I got eternal life? That's the same thing I got. I did all, I worked all day. I've been a Christian all my life. And he get the same reward I get? Yeah, he do. He going to get the same reward. Get the same stuff you got. Same little trinkets. Same little things. Going to get the same thing. Eternal life. That's the ultimate thing you can get. Boy, I, if I was just a custodian in heaven, I'd be happy. You just let me be the doorkeeper, the Bible says. If I was just a doorkeeper, I'd be cool. Just let me, while I'll just keep the door. I'll stand by the door and let people in. And that would be just, I'll find me if I clean tables off. As long as I'm in heaven, I'll be happy. Just think about it. In the end, if you was down in hell, you'd be like, you know what? If I could just, woo, if I could just step out the door, I could be the trash man. Y'all need anybody up there to take trash out? Because I'd be the garbage man up there if I had to in the kingdom of heaven. You shouldn't be worried about it. When you start looking at what other people got, and then you look at what you got, then you start judging yourself based off of them, thinking you deserve to be in heaven, thinking you deserve a reward, thinking because you did a whole bunch of work that you deserve more from God. God, you owe me. That's how people feel nowadays. You owe me. Come on here, because what I get for doing what I did. I did so much now. What I get. You see? And so you got to remember that God, he loves us. He let the sun shine on the unjust just like he do the just. What have you done for him lately? It's the question. You got to do more for God. That's why I pray. We got to do more for the Lord. Anyway, just because you love God. Amen. Many are called, but only few are chosen. Not everybody is going to go to heaven. Remember that. Not everybody that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth something. You better be in the vineyard of God doing his will. His will be in the church doing something for the Lord. The church don't mean the building. The church just means the body of Christ worldwide. What can you do for your brother? What can you do for your sister? How are you handling telling somebody else about God that don't really uh, understand. Have you taught somebody today? Did you get somebody saved last week? Did you get anybody saved all year? We in October. What's this? October 26th? Did you get how many people you got saved? Man, you can't save anybody. Well, okay, was, okay, you don't believe you can save nobody? Did you lead anybody over toward uh, doing right? Well, I can't do it myself. Okay, well, did you tell anybody about Jesus? Did anybody look at your life this year from January 1 to October 2, 6? All right. Did anybody ever look at you and decide in themselves that they would like a piece of Jesus Christ? Did anybody ever look at you and say that? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Is anybody interested in God because of you? You see, you can put on all the makeup you want. You put the lipstick on, the men can put on their diamond rings, you can